This is what it looks like when the hair is wet and down. This video, as the title suggests, is pretty much about the things that you need to know if you're getting your hair transplant done. <laughs> Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. My name's Gregory Gage and this video is just gonna be kind of like a stopgap between my nine month and my 10 month video because there's a bunch of stuff that I wanted to put in my previous update but I forgot to put it in there. This is gonna be answering some of the questions that I get most often and basically some little extra stuff in there as well that I figured I would, I would, I would answer. So I had an FUE hair transplant at Vinci Hair Clinic in London. I had 2,000 to 2,500 grafts taken from the back of my head and put into the front of my head. There's two main types of hair transplant procedure. There is FUE, which is follicular unit extraction, and there is FUT, which is follicular unit transplantation. So with FUE, there is scarring basically all the way along the back of your head, but it is sporadic. It is spaced out and it is quite light scarring. So if they do it really well and you, you heal up really good, you're going to have minimal scarring and it's going to be hardly noticeable at all. FUT is where they cut a strip of your scalp from the back of your head. So kind of like in a, like an overly shape. And then the hair is taken straight from that and put into your head at the front and then that gap at the back is sewn up so it's stitched together and you'll end up with a with one long scar along the back of your head if you keep your hair quite long at the back you're never going to notice that but if you have like a fade or a short hairstyle at the back you're going to have a visible scar that, you, that people are going to notice so for me that was one of the major reasons why i wanted to get an fue rather than an fut because i wanted the scarring to be spaced out and minimal hardly noticeable basically So for men, boys and men, your hair loss will mainly start between the ages of 17 and 30. So if you are going to lose hair, it's going to be usually between those ages. For me, I've always had a really high hairline in an M shape, so it's not so much of a fact of my hairline was receding. I'd always just had a really high hairline that went all the way up here like that and I had that since I was about 15 so it's something I've always been very conscious about and for me styling my hair I would always have short back and sides and then I would keep these sections of my hair quite long so that I could like wisp them over kind of like a comb over to the to, to kind of mask the the really high hairline but yeah so if you are going to lose hair it will be between those ages now to stop that or to slow that down there are different medications that you can take like finasteride or minoxidil basically propecia which was a drug that was developed to help stop prostate cancer but one of the side effects of that was slowing down the hair loss it's then been used as a drug to slow or stop your hair loss in its tracks so if you have haven't considered trying medication like that, that could be an option for you if you're in the early stages of losing your hair or possibly a bit too young to get your hair transplant done. Aside from medication like finasteride and minoxidil, you could also try PRP injections. I had a session of PRP so you can check that out if you want to. There will be a link for that in the description box below. Basically they take your blood from your arm, they put it into a centrifuge, spin it around really really fast. That then separates the blood into platelet rich plasma, platelet poor plasma and just blood red blood cells so they take the platelet rich plasma from that and then they inject that into the area of your hair or into your scalp or wherever you are experiencing hair loss or thinning hair and that is supposed to stimulate hair growth it is something that you would need to maintain for a long period of time and as soon as you stop getting those sessions done then the effects will wear off so that is something to consider if you wanted to go down the prp route it probably will end up being quite expensive down the line because each session will be around 300 to 350 pounds or something like that it's pretty pain-free which is pretty good it's about 30 minutes you're in and out really quick really simple it doesn't hurt but yeah so so that's another option if you didn't want to go down the medication route and you'd rather go down the just injection route rather than having a full-on hair transplant now i'm 32 years old so my hair has has fully matured it got to the point where i just wanted it done i'm at a good age to get it done and if you are like at the end of your 20s beginning of 30s it's prime time to get a hair transplant done if you wanted to go down the hair transplant route some of the questions that i get asked quite frequently would be how painful is it pain wise there is i want to say no pain there is only like one little section of pain which is when they first inject the anesthetic injection in the back of your head so the first one was painful 
but it lasted for about five seconds and as soon as that anesthetic had kicked in, you can't feel anything and it's completely numb. They do several injections in a row on the back of your head and then another row on top of that. And then that is when they start taking out the hair follicles from the back of your head. So it's not painful, you can't feel it, you can kind of sense that there is something going on at the back of your head, but it doesn't hurt. Then the same thing again later on in the day, when you flip over onto your back, they have to inject the anesthetic. Again, the first injection was painful, but again, only lasted for about five seconds, then the pain is gone and it's just numb. So you can, again, feel the sensation of something going on on your head where they're making the incisions, but there is no pain. I'll say it's uncomfortable, but it is not painful. The weeks recovering from the surgery, so the first two weeks are probably the most difficult two weeks you're going to experience, mainly because it's very difficult to sleep. I can't comment on the recovery process of an FUT surgery because I haven't had it, but from what people have told me is it's very, very uncomfortable as you are healing. With my FUE, the back of my head was healing quite nicely. It healed quite well, I had to sleep pretty much on my back, just straight on my back, so I wasn't disturbing the freshly implanted grafts in the front of my head. And there was only like some minor itching a, a few days in, I think. But in the first week, you experience some swelling. That's usually gone by the end of the first week. But again, that's not painful. It's just kind of ugly to look at, I guess. You can get some quite bad bruising. Depending on how severe your swelling is, your eyes can close up. So I definitely advise taking at least, the very, very least, one week off work. A lot of people have asked me about wearing hats. It takes about 10 days for the grafts to be secure in your scalp. So I would absolutely avoid putting any sort of pressure of any kind, be that baseball cap, snapbacks, beanies or anything. I would just avoid putting any pressure onto your newly grafted hair for, I would say, two weeks. It's it, 10 days for them to be secure in your scalp, but I would just give it two weeks just to be on the safe side. That's pretty much that, really. So after two weeks, you can probably wear a hat and it won't be a problem. Another question that I've been asked is about swimming. A lot of people will worry what their hair looks like when it's wet. So what I am gonna do is get my hair really wet and show you guys, and then I'll leave it to dry naturally without drying it so you can see what happens to my hair my newly transplanted hair when it dries naturally. So I will be right back to show you my very wet hair. All right, so here I am back with my hair very wet. I basically just washed it and then just left it. So this is, it's not towel dried or anything. This is just how it looks when it's wet from a distance. You're not gonna know anything. So if you're on holiday and you're at the beach and you've got your wet hair, it looks absolutely fine. It looks, it looks, it just looks wet, like normal wet hair. I'm so happy with my hair transplant, I can't tell you guys. Okay, so let's do some close-ups of this hair. All right, there we go. There is a good close-up of the hair. You can kind of see that on this side, the hair goes out this way, and on this side, the hair goes out that way. It's so that when I style my hair up, if I want to style my hair up, it kind of just falls naturally. It's been it's been done really really well. So as you can see from a distance the hair looks great as it is. From really close up looking at it this close I've still got some ingrown hair bits there, little red spots that need to break through. I'm really really pleased with it. It looks it looks great. And then also this is what it looks like when the hair is wet and down. I don't think anyone would ever know but you can see underneath there there is like a you can see the nice straight hairline underneath there as well which is really really good so okay i'm just gonna let my hair air dry for a bit so i can show you guys what it looks like when the hair just naturally dries by itself um because it's it's kind of interesting i guess see you in a sec okay i'm back it's not completely dry yet but it's it's dry enough for me to show you guys what i meant the back of my hair when my hair grows quite long the back of the hair goes into little ringlets so i get really curly hair at the back. The hair that is now on my head here has obviously come from the back of my head and um, if I let it dry naturally, I'm gonna have to like zoom in again, you can see like the transplanted hair is actually, it dries curly. I've got naturally pretty wavy hair anyway, but the transplanted hair does dry, when it dries on its own, it dries quite curly. So you can see that the transplanted hair is pretty curly compared to my hair that's just above it. On the plus side, that kind of thickens out the fringe because it's, it's curly underneath and you can't really notice it so much. But yeah, that's essentially why I always blow dry my hair after I've got it wet so that the, 
the transparent hair doesn't go curly and <laughs> it just stays the same as the rest of my hair. So that's basically the situation with my hair when it gets wet. And if you guys have asked me about swimming, what the hair looks like when it's wet. So I figured I would show you properly what it looks like, how it dries. Um, yeah, just for your information, basically. That is pretty much it though for this video, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. If you decide to get your hair transplant done at Vinci Hair Clinic, you can get yourself a free three month supply of Vitruvian hair vitamins by using my code, which is gonna be just here. Um, use that when you book your initial consultation, and if you do end up getting your transplant done with Vinci, they will give you the vitamins for free on the day of surgery. I've only just recently started taking them, so I will let you guys know what I think of them further down the line. But yeah, if you're getting your hair done at Vinci anyway, you may as well use the code and get the free vitamins. So it's there if you want it. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in my next update around the 15th of May. So stick around, check it out, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my uploads. And um, yeah, feel free to follow me on Instagram or ask me any questions on Instagram. I will get back to you. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.